Hey everybody, we are teaching Gravity Sketch, and this episode is all about the ink and stroke tools. Ink and stroke tools are your standard tools for just drawing stuff. It's for sketching quick lines, it's for making little details, it's for making tubes and pipes, anything that's going to be drawn as a stroke. We have the ink and stroke tools to make these. Now they work pretty much the same way and they're edited pretty much the same way. The biggest difference is you can see how my ink tool has a very pointy end. We're gonna move it up close. And then a thick body and then it goes pointy at the end again. The regular stroke tool is pretty much the same thickness all the way through. From start to finish, it's the same pipe it's the same tube. So we're going to look at both of these tools and then how to edit and control them. So from its most basic, it's just a matter of using your trigger finger to draw a line. The thickness of the line is controlled by your thumb control. Now if you notice, when I've got this tool going, I'm actually going to switch to the stroke tool, there's a little tiny ball at the end of my controller. That's your drawing tool. The pipe or ink stroke will be that thickness throughout its duration, except for the ink, which is pointy on either end. Now we can change the size of that. If your thumb controller goes up and down, that's your grip size. If you go left and right, that is your pen size. So now it's a much larger stroke or it's a much tinier stroke, whichever sort of line that you need. While you're drawing, you can't change size mid-stroke. So you need to get everything into place at one size. After the fact, we can play with that. So I'm going to go back to my ink. I'm going to give it a good, decent ball size, but it still goes from pointy to pointy. Ink as opposed to solid size stroke. Once you've got your stroke created, we can use our blue button to edit and change the way this stroke behaves. And both ink and stroke have pretty much the same controls, same editing tools. I'm going to rip these off and put them right here so that you can always see these tools. Remember, your panel is in relation to you, not the studio. So now I've got my editing tools and you can see it adds the control points to my stroke here, to my ink here. As with all of our changing, I can, let's get this out of my face here, I can use the pointy purple one to get individual control points at a time, or I can use my main grip to grip several pieces at a time. This is one of the tools where I can use fall off to give it a more natural bending and twisting. We talk about fall off in another video. Now we can also use weight in our strokes and our inks. Weight was another one that we talked about, let me get my controller out of the way, where I can grab one of these control points and by moving it up and down, my thumb controller up and down, we're adding weight or removing weight from this curve point. Your control point will go between circle, whoops, square is the most weight, clover is the least weight, as we discussed in the weight episode. This is one of the shapes that is indeed controlled by weight. Now we can also control the thickness of the line. You'll notice on the pointy end, the circle is a lot tinier than in the thicker spots. If I grab a circle, now up and down does the weight, but left and right will bulge or shrink these control points. So I can grab that starting point and make it big. I can grab a middle point and make it small. So I can change the size. Now they're all really so small you can barely see it. Now I'll grab these and make these really big. So you can see how we can alter both the weight and the actual thickness of our stroke as we go. I can even grab all these pieces, whoops, 
Work with me here, computer. Grab all these pieces and make the whole thing different size. Now what's fun is when you stretch an ink or stroke, you'll notice I'm not making it thicker. I'm just making a bigger distance between the gaps. So I, if I really want a thick, plump, I'm actually going to want to grab this whole thing and make it really tiny. Now that it's really tiny, I can grab those spots and make them thicker. And now you can see how the whole tube feels fatter. If I grab all those control points and stretch it out, I'm only changing the distance between the control points, not the thickness of the stroke. So these are things to consider as you're altering. If I make it tiny like this, you can see it's still really skinny. If I grab all the control points, and now make it tiny. Now it's changing the size of the object without changing its relationship to the thickness of the tube. It's as if the control points are getting closer together so I can get a fatter tube. If we look closely, we can still see some weight change in here. Now with our editing tools, we have some tools to take even more control of this. Let's get this over here. You'll notice I was changing weight. A couple of these markers are going either square or clover. There is a button on our editing tool here. Reset weights. We'll put them all back to a standard circle. So if you've been playing with the pointiness values of your, of your line, reset weights will put them all back to medium, perfectly circle control points. We also have a reset thickness. So if you've been playing with how thick and how skinny, and it's been going thick and skinny, we've got a button to reset everything back to default. So after you've played with it, you can use these controls to reset it back the way it was. Now with some of these lines, you can see I've got a lot of control points for this one curve. That's what our Simplify Control Points button will do, is it's going to reduce the number of control points in this line. It will try to keep the curve as similar as possible. So here's my S-curve shape, and we're now going to try to simplify the points. So you can see it's still holding the curve, but there are now much fewer control points. If I do it again, now there are so few control points, we're losing some of those details. Undo. Get those control points back. That's about as smooth as I can get. Smoothing, simplifying control points will especially help on this lower end system, like quests and things. If I can reduce the, num the amount of information in my models, I can get more bang for buck, as it were. This is close enough to that that I don't really mind losing some of those control points if it's going to save me some processing power. So we can play with and reset points, weights, and thickness right from our editing panel. You can see normally our shape of our tube is a nice round tube. These controls at the bottom and this section here are how we control this roundness. These here, perfectly round, square stroke. Now you can see how my stroke is rectangular. It's still twisting through space, but instead of being circular, it's a four-sided square moving through space. The diamond stroke is very similar. It's also a four-corner, four-face stroke. Slight variation uses fewer polygons, mostly at the end caps that are different. Round keeps it tubular. These will make it more rigid, more square. This grid up here is describing the shape. You'll notice right now it's a perfectly round tube. If I grab that stroke dot and drag it to either corner, see how these corners are flat? I'm going to drag this into a flat corner, and you can see how it flattens my tube into a ribbon. If I drag it to the other corner, it's still a ribbon, but now it's a vertical. So either side will flatten your tube depending on which way you go.
Likewise, moving it up and down. You can see here's another way to control weight. Fatter, skinnier. So I could start with something really fat and then use my weights to make it even bigger or even skinnier. Oops, let's make it where you can see this. So I'm going to grab this, more weight, less weight, more heaviness, lighter heaviness. So this lets you go even more extreme with your sizes. Let's get you out of the way so people can see what I'm doing. Here we go. So this grid is how we control both thickness of line and flatness of ribbon. So if I want a tiny ribbon, I'll go on the edge and down in size. Tiny ribbon. Other ribbon, but large in size. Big, fat ribbon. So this is how you control. It will actually try to stick to the line to make it a little easier for you to get your perfectly round shapes. I'm going to reset my weights since I was playing with, I'm, uh, and reset the thickness. Okay, back to a normal skinny tube of my stroke. So this gives you a lot more control over how your stroke is going to look. These toggles, you can just click to turn them on and off, drag it back and forth. They're going to determine some more appearances of your, of your uh, wonderful little guy here. Snap, for example, allows you when you're moving and creating to have these guys stick. There are environmental settings where you can get these control points and snapping will let you have these points a little more easy to get things lining up and staying aligned with each other. Mirrored. Well, actually, let's bring it down smaller so we can get more lines going here. Mirrored is when we've got two or more of the same thing. If I get my guy here, let's see if mirroring is going to let me. I don't have one activated here. We'll do one later. But mirroring is how we have our world axis and we have duplicates on either side. This is especially helpful when we're making models and things and I want to add motorcycle exhaust pipes on both sides. Mirror will duplicate what's happening on both sides. End caps are that r slightly rounded end to our lines here. I'm going to try to get it close so you can see right now. You can see how flat the end of my line is. By giving it end caps, it allows a little bit more roundness. This also lets me expand the size and get that bubble on the end of it. End caps add a round-ended lump. Otherwise, you're going to have a flat-ended cylinder on both sides. So you can do it either way that you need. Loop will actually connect your front component to your end component. So if I add the loop, these two pieces connect. And now their control points creates a curve between the start and the end. Turning it off again breaks it into a separate starting and ending point. Loop is how we control connecting the ends, turning it into a circle instead of a single flat line. Low poly, really when we come down to it, these curves, these smooths, are using our subdivide. So if I turn on low poly, it's actually going to kill the subdivide curves and make everything just go straight point to point to point. I can still play with size and things like that, but it's not going to have nearly as much of an effect. When I go back to subdivide, turn off low poly, then the weighting and things will have more of an effect. But if I don't want curves, I just want straight lines. Low poly is how we convert from subdivided curves into straight point-to-point -point lines. Repeated texture. Not only can I create these things in color, so let's save these changes, but I'm going to change the color of this guy to a green. It's kind of a dark green. Let's make it a bright green. I can also change the material. Let's make it reflective. 
Now you can see it's a metallic. But I can also make it textured. If I bring in one of my reference images, and we'll do a whole other episode about that, but I'm going to bring in a reference image that's sort of got a picture on it. Here's a good one. I'm actually going to bring this picture into my model, into my uh, studio. Now when I recolor this object, I actually get that texture as an option. So let's get close so you can see it. Grab. Now we've got my texture on this little cube, and I'm going to choose it. And now I've got that texture on my item. Now it's taking this picture and stretching it to cover the entire tube. So there is one copy. If you look closely, these blue streaks are the blue dots. So our option, repeated texture, when I turn that on, watch my tube here. Let's make sure you can see what I'm doing. Now you can see how it's actually duplicating this picture over and over again to cover it. So repeated texture, do you want to stretch your picture one copy? or repeat this picture many times. Since the stripe lines up top to bottom, all of those repeated textures line up top to bottom. So when we edit our shape here, we can use pictures, any picture you want, just bring it in, and we can use these as textures on our objects, whether it's once for the whole thing or repeat this picture as many times as you need to cover the whole thing. Let's put you over here. Now that I've got this guy, you can see how that red stripe goes all the way around. One of the options when I'm editing normally, when I'm editing, I'm grabbing control points to change the curve. If I use my thumb trigger left and right, watch the tube here. Instead of control points, ah, see these little blue arrows? That's controlling the direction, the curve of my object. If you look closely, see how these blue arrows are attached to a blue stripe? I can now grab these blue arrows and rotate and turn and twist. So I'm going to move these blue arrows so you can see how the blue line that connects them is going all the way around, almost like a candy cane. That is controlling the heading of your textures, amongst other things. So now when I stop editing, now you can see how that red stripe follows the twisting candy cane that I set up with those blue arrows. So not only can we control the curve, but we have an option in our editing tool. Standard editing is using the control points. Using your main controller left and right gives you the blue arrows to control the twist of your object as well. With all of these controls, let's get my controller here. With all of these controls, plus our texturing, you can take these ink strokes, inks and strokes, as it were, to do almost any type of arrangement that you need. Hopefully, this gives you a lot of ways of controlling your objects and really taking control and making them behave the way you want, whether it's grabbing pieces and making them thicker or grabbing pieces and making them more weight or altering the shape of your line or any of these controls. You can get a lot of performance out of these things. I hope this has been helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Let us know if you have any things you would like us to do lessons on. We do these things all the time at youtube.com slash shameless mayhem. And this is entirely to help you guys get good with Gravity Sketch. Thanks for joining me, everybody. We'll see you next time.